this video. Today I'll be showing you how to create a trophy in a mesh style, like this. Or maybe like this. Uh, this deer head was an older project that I did and when I got the idea for this unicorn trophy I figured let's make a video. Oh and also this video has been sponsored by Gearbest. They have provided us with this TiVo flash so this project will be printed on the TiVo flash and then at the end of the video we are going to have a look at how well this 3D printer did. So let's head right into it. Alright, let's get started. So first off we want to find a reference model for the yeah for the unicorn that we're trying to create. So as you can see there is a nice unicorn that we can use. And there's even a low poly trophy which we could also use. Now if there is no low poly version available for the object that you try to create, for the trophy, uh, the animal or whatever beast, uh, then I'm gonna show you really quick how to do this. You will want to load your model into Mesh Mixer. We do a simple plane cut to get rid of the unnecessary part. Accept the plane cut and then we want to Control A, select the whole thing, go to edit, go to reduce. And now by increasing the percentage we will reduce the model up to a single triangle. Good job. No, Let's go with 98%. Yeah, this looks reasonably low poly, accept that and boom. This is the easy way. The next step you need to do is go to edit, make pattern and select edges. And now Mesh Mixer will automatically put a beam on the edge of every triangle. There's also a nice feature that you can add a gradient. You can uh, go to the gradient section and um, activate line gradient. And now you got those two dots floating in the in the air. You want to drag one of them to the base and the other one to the head. Maybe move them from the side also. And as you can see what's what's happening now is that uh, you can make the beams close to the first dot thicker while the beams close to the second one are thinner. This will be a little bit too extreme but you get the idea so if we reduce the scale oh, then the effect will not be as pronounced so once mesh mixer is done calculating the mesh you're you're basically done this is the easiest way you you can create these kind of trophies now I don't know how this um, other trophy that we saw this one was created. Uh, maybe this guy dragged every or this girl dragged every triangle by hand. Personally I don't think so. It's asymmetric and this annoys me. I don't like it that much. The reduced model from us also looks kind of weird and wonky. The lines are not straight. It's very irregular and overall not that pleasing. Like the ears are weird. The horn is weird. So that's why next up we're gonna have a look at Blender and see how we can improve this. Now don't worry, this is not that complicated. Also you don't need to be an artist in order to create a nice looking trophy. That's why we have our reference. Uh, but also keep in mind that I cannot make this a Blender tutorial. So uh, I'll put some links in the description where you can learn the basics of Blender really easy. So to create a nice looking low poly version of this head, first we want to load in a new mesh. Shift a and get a plane into our object switch to edit mode 
And now the Blender has this really nice feature where you can stick vertices to the surface of another object. Click the magnet, select face and closest. And now when we move our vertices, they will stick to the surface of our reference model. So this makes it really easy to get a nice horse or in this case unicorn shape without a lot of artistic talent. Now a few shortcuts that might be handy for you. Uh, you can press A to select all and A again to deselect all in case you selected a few vertices and want to deselect. You can select a vertice and press E to extrude it. It will follow your mouse. Left click to accept. If you press G, you then move the selected vertice again. And if we, let's say, extrude it again and now select with shift left click all four, press F for face. We now create a new face. Now you want to keep tracing your reference with quads. So that is faces with four edges and in some places tries. So faces with three edges as we are seeing here. And in special cases like the ear, you might even want to create a face that has six edges. Now you shouldn't do this if you want to create a nice mesh, but in our trophy, it will look really nice in the end. So eventually you will be done tracing your whole reference. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, let me just export this, throw it into mesh mixer and boom, I'll be done. But here's the catch. If we now export our model and load it in mesh mixer, it will only consist of triangles. So while in Blender, we were able to create quads, so faces with four edges or even more, uh, six edges in the case of the ear, a mesh mixer will automatically make triangles out of these. And this ruins our nice and handcrafted shape. I'll show you. Make pattern, edges, accept. As you can see, the result has nothing to do with our nicely handcrafted low poly mesh. It looks horrible, especially the eyes. We can create the same effect that Mesh Mixer has by using a modifier in Blender. You will want to add the wireframe modifier to your model and this already gives us the result that we want. A few settings that we need to do. Adjust the thickness so it's reasonably thick beams and activate the boundary to close open faces. So if we don't have it activated, there will be a hole in the back of our trophy and uh, at the top where we want to add the horn later on. So activate the boundary. Another setting that's kind of important is the crease edges. If we activate it, uh, nothing really change visible, changes visibly. However, if we add a subdivision surface modifier after our wireframe modifier and we reduce the crease edges, we see that, well, we see this weird effect. This has to do with how Blender um, deals with the subdivision surface modifier that you usually throw onto every model to make it look nicer. Um, but this gives us a way to thicken the points where all the beams meet. So activate crease edges and apply the subdivision surface modifier and then depending on how high your crease edges value is, you will get super sharp edges or less, less or sharp edges. I also want to show you how I created the horn. You want to start off with a square. It's a mesh with four edges, but it has no face. Then you apply a screw modifier in Z direction. You can just play with the settings and add a simple deform set to taper on top of it. And if we add the deform, we get something like this. 
Next, we apply the modifiers. We go into edit mode and we want to select only the outer edge. This is a little bit complicated because you need to use control to select the first and last edge and it will automatically find the path connecting them and then you need to press um, shift to select the new edge and then control again to select this one. Now we also want to use those four. Um, press shift D to copy that. Press P by selection and now this is a new object. Now we edit the edges that we just copied over. We go into edit mode, select the top vertices, press Alt M, add center and make a single vertex out of it. Now to add some thickness to the horn, we are going to use a different modifier. This time we are going to use the so-called skin modifier instead of the wireframe modifier. The skin modifier has a similar effect. Uh, you can go into the edit mode, press A to select everything and then by pressing Ctrl A and moving the mouse you can adjust the thickness. However, we did not use this modifier earlier for our head because it tends to uh, have a broken mesh at complicated intersections. So we can see that the top point of this mesh is broken, but fortunately we can fix it by extruding one more edge out of the top and this fixes our mesh. However, in my experience, this modifier tends to cause a lot of issues. I tried to use it for the deer head. I would recommend to use the other modifier, the wireframe modifier for your head. After you've added this modifier, feel free to add our subdivision surface modifier again and we get a pretty nice horn. Now before we apply all the modifiers, I suggest that you load in a plane that is oriented the same way that the build plate will be oriented later. And then you can move this through your model to check which of the beams will be a 90 degree overhang. Like this. So technically this is bridging, but still to increase the print quality, you will want to adjust your model so that you don't have those 90 degree overhangs like this. The beams down below I will manually support by selecting just these areas in Simplify 3D. After you've checked the whole model you can apply all your modifiers. Now that we're almost done we just want to do one more thing to our trophy and that is to increase the thickness of the beams at the back. So I'm going to select it, go into edit mode, press 3 for the side view and make sure that this little thing is not checked and now we press B to box select. With Alt S we can now scale the thickness and in order to make sure that it also Scales smoothly, we activate this feature, enable proportional editing. Now if we press Alt S, we can make a smoother transition. Scroll the mouse wheel for increasing the area of influence. And then just type 0.05, yeah, that's too much escape. Alt S, 0.005 on your keyboard, on your, on your numpad. Boom. You can do this in multiple steps for, for a better effect. Uh, admittedly, this is not really nice to do, but I don't know of any other way. To make sure that the mesh has no errors and because it's currently two parts, I load the whole thing into mesh mixer at the end and use the make solid command with a high enough resolution, let's say 0.5 millimeters for the cell size and the solid accuracy to combine them and recalculate the mesh. After that, I cut off the horn to print it as a separate part. And with that, we're gonna have a look at the printing results. 
The final print turned out really well in my opinion. And that's mostly due to the fact that the Tipo Flash in the stock configuration already has two fans cooling the filament from both sides. So you can achieve way more than the usual 45 degrees of overhang. In total it took three tries to get this print. In the first try I had not thickened up the beam at the back yet, so uh, one of them got knocked over during the print. And then after I, I changed the model, I had the same issue. And when I checked it, I realized that the shells were not really connecting properly. You can see it in this picture. So what I did is I just took the same model, printed it again, but this time I was uh, running it at 5% over extrusion and slowed down the print speed. And this gave me a perfect print in the end. I used some supports at the ears and at the very front of the neck. However, if your slicer does not support um, local supports, then it should also work without them. Just make sure that you have maybe a brim attached to the base so you have good bed adhesion. Since there are already a bunch of really good in-depth reviews of the printer itself out there, I just want to mention a few points really quick that uh, caught my attention while using this printer. For once I, I liked how fast the heated bed is actually heating because it's using the full voltage of the power outlet and not just like 12 or 24 volts. So it's really fast to get up to temperature. Also, you can heat the bed um, to 70 degrees and then your prints will stick really good to the glass and also pop right off once they cool down. So that's really convenient. One weird thing is the belt connecting the two Z axes because in my eyes, it's kind of pointless. When I assembled the printer, I made sure that the Z axis has no tension in the bearings or in the stepper motor. And when I fixed everything, I ended up with the belt being that loose. So yeah, the, the belt is not doing anything, but then again, it's not harming the printer either. So I didn't bother, I wasn't, I couldn't be bothered to remove it. So yeah, that sums up my experience printing this mesh style sculpture on the TV flash sponsored by Gearbest. I hope you guys could learn something and maybe are inspired to try this technique for yourself on a different kind of model. The files for the unicorn are in the link down below as well. And I wish you all a Merry Christmas and happy making.